Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. That's not why he wants uh, peace and richer. I don't like his a long story, which is what we're going to get into right now. <laughs> okay. Right. So you got, you see here, there's a lot of moving parts. See, the brother, he talked about, uh, re Iran attacking Iran, attacking, uh, uh, Yemen. He talked about the Russian, uh, aspect. And we're going to get into these three major parts, inshallah. So the first thing we want to get into is Donald Trump's relationship with Russia. So in the eighties, Okay. The Trump Tower, you know, as you know, was was uh, pretty much built or whatnot. Guys, I think it was built in the in the the mid seven, no, late seventies, if I'm not mistaken. But d during the eighties was its heyday, right? And since the since the inception of the Trump t Tower, since its inception, okay, uh, it was inhabited inhabited by organized crime figures. Trump always used to like to work with gangsters and organized crime and all this kind of stuff, right? He is Trump. He himself, he especially liked to work with the the mafia. Okay, he, this is what he this is what he was known for, right? So through Trump's search of, for cash in his real estate empire, he turned to the Russians, and throughout the eighties, he was uh, basically partnering up with the Russians and whatnot through ways of work, immigration, which had transformed Trump's heartland of Brooklyn, particularly Brighton Be Be Beach, into a catch-rich catch uh, venture from the Russian mafia. And if you guys know about the Russian mafia, the Russian mafia and the KGB are pretty much part and parcel. They work together, hand in hand, okay? And the Russian mafia in those days, were they were protected by the Italians because the, the Italians, they themselves, used uh, the Russian mafia because they were cash-rich cash, cash rich, to essentially... Uh, how do you say like they seeded their operations they seeded the the russian mobs operations okay so from the early years of the trump tower years he realized the benefit of working with mobsters and gangsters and things of this nature right so he made a deal with this guy his name is david bogdan okay you can look this up okay i'm not making this up i'm not just speaking here okay <laughs> David Bogdan, he was a Russian mob boss, and he ran one of the most lucrative scams for a commission for the Italian mob, okay, which was uh, the Russians, when they arrived here, one of their major scams was called, was known as the Red Daisy Gasoline Tax Scam. Okay. And what they did is that essentially they established hundreds and hundreds of shell companies, and they would buy gasoline stations, okay? This is what they were doing back in the, the 80s. Okay. And just before uh, the tax man came, right, when, when it came for taxes, they would declare bankruptcy and then sell it to another shell company. And through this process, uh, you know, when the, every single time the, the tax man came, they say, oh, you know, oh, well, that was the previous owner and that was the previous owner. So they have, they essentially uh, tax evaded to the tune of billions of dollars uh, per year in the 80s. Billions, okay? This is, this is how they, they, they essentially, you know, uh, evaded billions of dollars of taxes, which saved them, of course, billions of dollars. So they have all of this billions of dollars. So now they have to launder this money. So where do you think they turn to to launder this money, <laughs> right? Right. This is a big thing. It's a, it's a big, big thing because you got to understand the relationship between Donald Trump and the Russians and how this all thing, whole thing started. They went to Donald Trump and Trump hours. So this, this mob boss, David Bogdan, he meets Donald Trump and he says, okay, you know, I'll take five condos in your Trump tower or whatnot. Right. And this, this is how Trump realized how, how cash, cash rich these gangsters were and how he he became very cash wealthy okay so these mobsters would go they would buy these these condos right to launder their money and then every single time you know if if the the taxman came saying well, where do you get this 10 million dollars from they just said you know if, if they if they for example for example they were selling 10 million dollars worth of cocaine or whatever they and they put it into that abc corporation because of the the scams they're running with the gas stations or some other anonymous corporations and then uh they need to sell this cocaine they have this cash and when the taxman comes what did they do they said oh you know well we sold our condos at trump tower this is how this whole thing began 
with his relationship with the, the Russians, okay? That's how the, their money became clean. They get it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so at this time, this is before uh, the, the uh, what you would call it, the fall of communism, okay? So the FBI in New York City at that time, they had a nexus, right? However, they weren't even able to find this stuff. Why? Because this laundering scam was so done so perfectly that they weren't even able to, to catch it, right? Throughout the 80s, right? They, they, they were bringing in all this cash and they weren't able to catch it. Even the IRS wasn't able to, able to catch it. You get it? So there's a legal process. A concept is called the, it's known as the intentional blindness or deliberate blindness uh concept right that and that is that if there's a pattern and you can prove deliberate blindness then you are guilty of this crime right paper gold you see black folks are chumps if america were to tell you to bring all the rocks in this country to her and she'll give you a million dollars for it you'll do it and the next day she'll tell you we're using rocks for currencies chump 